I'm that and previously on a Sea of Stars. To think that you could stop me with a snap of your fingers. But no, you choose to cling to the silly belief that this all turns out good someday. <laughs> Dead. Right. He took a direct hit and has no innate magic to protect himself. The Elder Mist summons, we have to go right now. What? That's way too far. Garl is dying. Don't you see, Valeri? The distance is always short if we fly. I I guess Valeri skipped the chapter on flying. <gasps> oh, now we're talking. Run while you can, Flesh Mancer. The Sorceress and I will be waiting. Come if you dare. He's got wings? He's the Great Eagle? I feel colder and c colder. Hey, we got the fly in the end. That's pretty good, right? I wish I could help you. One last time. When death is near, the unresolved chapters of one's prophecy beckon. Okay, we're getting clues. We're getting big clues. Oh, big old sleepy boy. Okay, some big statues standing around. The Sea of Stars, I presume? When the moment comes, demand a flask of borrowed time. Zayl, I just had a vision. I think I know how to help you. Rashan, I demand a flask of borrowed time. Opa! Yeah. Rashan, listen carefully, girl. The ethereal feeling you are experiencing is a side effect of borrowed time. The potion's magic worked only because you had a clarity of purpose. You currently exist in between realities. Borrowed time will keep you here until your deed is done, but you must understand you will still die in the end. That cannot be changed. I know exactly what to do. To get you across the Sea of Stars, there's people we need permission from. We'll need a bargaining chip, but I know just the thing. Hey, I suppose the flying was super spur of the moment thing? Yeah, not exactly sure how we did that. The connection took place, but your new powers need time to grow. It's okay, there's another way. The mysterious shrine out in the ocean south of Mesa Island is connected somehow. Yeet can get us closer, let's go. Are you kidding me? We're going back here with Yeet? Oh, we're gonna die. Oh boy. Here we go again. Oh! Oh, delicious. Oh, yum. Love to see it. On one hand, we're not really happy that we're losing Garl again. But on the other hand, seems like there's maybe an opportunity here at the Skyward Shrine for us to actually find and sail on the Sea of Stars. That's right. It's real. There is a Sea of Stars, and if it's there, we're going to find it. This is how we reach the ones who can grant access to... The Sea of Stars. Remember this island over here? I was like, man, we're gonna have to fly to get to this one. I was wrong. We just need a bridge. At the Skyward Shrine, I suppose we're going up. Welcome to Cloud Kingdom. We're just here right at the very top of the world, as far as we can tell. Who knew there's an entire civilization just out here floating in the clouds? Oh boy, big feet. Hello? Not very talkative. Maybe a portal thing? Let's see what's over here first. Oh, more feet. Okay. You think they're sky giants? Villager. Hello, little ones. Are you going to the council meeting? If so, I wish you luck. Okay, thanks. This is interesting. When we talk to uh, this this sky giant here. Hello, small visitors. Did Luana mend the connection at last? Luana is the, the goddess of these moon magics, so 
It's it's a little bit of, I suppose, foreshadowing might be the right word. Excuse us. Hopefully we're on the right way. Who demands an audience? Present yourself. I am the one demanding audience. We can hear you fine, no need to shout. It is our understanding that you are on borrowed time. I am, and I have a request. Speak. I want you to grant my friends access to the Sea of Stars. Do you understand what you're asking of us? Absolutely. Who will vouch for you? Great Eagle. You honor us with your presence. Tell us, do they possess the key? Yes, they have reclaimed the Vesper Tyne. But do they possess the strength? Yes, Solon and Luana have awoken. There we go. We deem this group of travelers satisfactory. This leaves only the matter of the deed. What does the warrior cook intend to offer in exchange for his friend's passage? I will wake the sleeper. You would bring total destruction to this world? What makes you believe we would accept such a proposition? Don't worry, I'll make it friendly again. Oh my goodness, Garl. This is why everyone loves you, huh? That is a tall order. What is your plan? I will complete the ritual of the elements by cooking. <laughs> Rashan, impossible. <laughs> oh man. If you can truly soothe the sleeper, we will grant your friends access to the Sea of Stars. The group has been split up. And each member of the group is tasked with getting a different ingredient for some big loaf of bread that Garl wants to cook in order to wake up the sleeper. Well, I think we're going in the right direction, at least. I think we're going in the right direction, at least. But sometimes it feels like we're doing all the right things, but we're not getting anywhere fast. I really don't like splitting up the team, but sometimes that seems to be what needs to be done. Let's see what this does. Here we go. So we got an upgrade from our coral hammer into a cobalt hammer. With the cobalt hammer, we can now break blue crystals. So we've walked by a few of these blue crystals in our travels. And now we have a reason to go back and explore, you know, universe again, more places with those crystals and see, you know, what they unlock, which that genuinely is exciting to me at this point. All right, so this is in this crystal, one of the ingredients Garl needs to make his magic bread. Cobalt hammer, I choose you. Let's get this ingredient. I think this was the the essence of air. The epitome of wind. The quintessential breeze. We are here at Maelstrom Point. The, uh, the alchemist has uh, split himself into three to come with us. This is where we fought the, um, the wind mage guy. We're back. To pick a fight with the sea monster. As it turns out that... This guy has another ingredient we need for Garl's bread. I don't know what he's cooking, but I kind of wish he wouldn't at this point. Because I'll tell you what, this bread is some tough stuff to make. Now we have two things we can target. We can target the tail or the big monster. But I do believe if we don't take out the tail, it's going to be kind of a juicy fight. Because... It's going to just counterattack us the whole time. Yep, there it is. Just getting punished. Other than that, it's the, the same fight. All right. We, uh, we got a beat. Big 10,000 juicy XP. And the next ingredient for Garl's... Garl's magic bread. Apparently Garl's bread he's making needs to be cooked in a lava volcano. So we are tasked with kind of our, our third group here to clear out of monsters. And I think we're getting really close to the end, I hope. Is it's, uh, it's pretty rough. It really is. Uh, one really nice thing is that we are... Rashan kind of copied himself, right? Control C. Control V'd, 
And so everyone's got one, and his basic attack bounces, hits both enemies. So being stuck with just, you know, two instead of three party members, having Rashawn actually makes a big difference. And he also has a heal. So that means we're able to just manage the fights better by getting that AoE damage on, on every hit. Really like that. I don't love this objective to just go clear this cave, even though thematically it makes sense. Combat is, is just definitely one of the weakest facets of Sea of Stars. We'll see how it goes. I'm sure there's going to be some kind of a little a little mini boss here at the end, which I'm really looking forward to seeing that design as I really do think these... Oh, maybe down this ramp. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. I see. I see. That makes sense. Look at that. Cooled off some of the uh, the lava, the magma, whatever, right? Which means it uh, opened up a new area. Like level design, ten out of ten. Art design, ten out of ten. Combat, two point five out of ten. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to think harder if I really if I really believe those scores. But seriously, this is a it's a cool level. But like, darn. I sure wanted quick save here, and we'll talk to the merchant too while we're here. We actually already have better gear or e equivalent gear but i think it's just really player friendly that there are these merchants just before the uh the fights we've been getting into just to make sure your gear hasn't like fallen behind because you could have missed picking up some chests or you could have missed some some merchants that were selling them here we go what do we got here huh what's this about what have we got here what's this about oh my goodness i thought it was a cheese monster for a minute so we're going to open up with Rashan. So we can get that live mana. And we will be just that's that's the whole strat right there. We're going to spend the entire fight letting Rashan auto just to be building up the live mana so that um Valeri here can uh, do the big hit with the moon magic to the best of our ability. And the other th fun thing with Rashan, I don't know if you noticed it there, but his attack does poison damage. So he does poison, he does the purpley magic, and he uh, has AoE attacks with his basic attack. I mean, he's just absolutely fantastic. Did I mention his skill as a heal? Like, I don't know why we don't just use him always. As much as uh, we find Garl, you know, super charming, Darn, this guy just has it all. What exactly do we think this monster is? This Toad Kano? I mean, is it some kind of lava frog? I mean, I almost feel like it is a, a miniature volcano itself, right? All right. We defeated the old Toad Kano. So Garl should be able to uh, get in here and, and bake his magic bread. Uh, we're back on Mirth. Oh, I forgot how popular Garl was here. Garl asked for a specific kind of wheat that needed this like celestial dew from this sea monster we fought. So we're getting that together back at Mirth here for his, uh, his magic bread. There we go. Pirate crew of the Vesper Tyne helping out. All right, just like he said, Weed in the top. A little lava, a little wind. All right, Malcolm, on, turn up the heat. Killed mountain. That magma lava. Perfection. Now we let it bake. Look, you can see the bread loaf there on the edge of Killed Mountain. This is great. So Garl asked for a wind spirit and kind of the moment of truth here, this works or not. If it works, we'll have an opportunity to sail the Sea of Stars. We're going to let the the magic fresh bread, the scent of it curl its way over to the sleeper. Oh, yeah, I love this. This guy's my favorite. We haven't even met. Look, even his forehead's got the bread X on it. He loves he loves fresh baked bread. Who doesn't? Legend says if the sleeper wakes up, it's the end of the world. 
but maybe it's the start of something new. Garl is betting everything. Garl literally is betting the fate of this entire world on this act from the sleeper here, Mr. Dragon. Thank you, Curious One, for this unprecedented act of goodness and generosity. Through your creation, the elements have soothed my long tormented soul. Remember that was Garl's like prophecy? I forget if which oracle or elder mist told him that, but epic. Hey, anytime. It's just, uh, just bread, really. This marks a new beginning for me. If it is not too much to ask, would you be willing to give me a new name? My past was one of anger and destruction, but you have shown me the way to a higher purpose. I wish to honor your memory by becoming a devoted caterer. Oh my goodness. For this new life, I shall name you Wentworth. Once again, I thank you. Never have I encountered such a caring soul. I understand your time is almost up. Is there anything I can do to repay your kindness? For my final journey, I'd love to fly on your back with my friends. It would be my honor and privilege. How dare they make the most likable character and then kill him off? Who does that, huh? This was Garl's dream. He told us this as kids, right? About the sleeper in that cave. Garl, I'm okay. It doesn't hurt anymore. I'm just really sleepy. Larry, we'll be with you until the end. I know. I'm so lucky. Hey, promise me one thing. I want you to use this gift. You'll travel across the Sea of Stars. I mean, someone has to kick Erlina's butt and teach the Flesmancer a lesson. We'll go and do that. Don't worry. Man, this is so dr drawn out, huh? Like, how many times have we lost Garl, almost lost Garl? Zale and Valeri, I can't thank you enough for everything. All these moments together, all the adventures, I couldn't have asked for better friends. So you can see there's Garl's pack and his famous lid. There's the pirates, there's Teak, Headmaster, Zale and Valeri. We are gathered here today to honor Garl the Warrior Cook. Born in Moon Cradle, he chose a life of adventure and accomplished many great deeds, fighting along the Solstice Warriors, founding the peaceful town of Mirth, and soothing Wentworth, formerly known as the Sleeper. A true pirate chef. This adventure won't be the same without you, pal. The world will hear the stories of your deeds for generations to come. This I vow. Malcolmund. Thank you for teaching me, Mr. Garl. I'm glad you like the kiln. May Garl be remembered for his warm heart, his bravery, and his unrelenting smile. Garl kept his end of the promise. We're going to see if the Sky Giants here will keep their side of the deal. The sleeper has been soothed and awoken. So it has. You would claim the reward then. You can actually see in the background there, just below the feet in the middle, the sleeper just flying around. Cool. We demand access to the Sea of Stars, as agreed upon. First, all travelers must be registered. Oh, it's the whole crew of the of the Vespertine here, and uh, Teak's the historian, it looks like, too. Getting registered. Yeah, it really was everyone. Oh my goodness. We hereby grant you access to the Sea of Stars. Now go and sail away to where you are most needed. Thank you. We will use this gift to bring about peace. Okay, we are sailing across the known ocean. We're going to make our way into, hopefully, the Sea of Stars entrance portal. Just over this way. There it is. Well, we're going in. Oh, we're in it now. Welcome to the Sea of Stars. Look at this. And our brains are probably going to be mush when we get wherever we're going if we make it there long. Legendary. And well, we made it somewhere. Okay, we'll go into question mark, question mark, question mark. Okay, looks like we got the lights on. The intruder alert. Oh no, we uh, we might be friends, Mr. Robot. Enemies from another world have breached the compound, says the Guardian. Commencing elimination. Who, us? Apparently us. Here comes that claw. Taser grip. Oh, I don't like this. Do not consent. Let's see how it likes our sunball. 
ate that thing right up. Wow. This giant robot keeps summoning in these little robots, and then they just shield each other and then power each other up. Like, oh my goodness. I just absolutely just beating this up here. You can see the big robot has like some sparks and smoke coming off of it, but that's just too little too late. It feels like almost because all those blue damage numbers are not real damage. That's damage. That's damage on the shield. That was 52 damage to the boss, but 53 shield damage to the little guy. And uh, if we don't break the lock, the dude on the right, he will shield up the uh, the main boss here. Got him. Apparently space is full of robots, though. Or at least the back door to whatever place we are, this depot. Looks like a storage room to me. Alright, we took down the Guardian, which hopefully doesn't have any, like, long-term consequences. As its name was Guardian. Look, Sarai's part robot. She says, welcome to my world. We desperately need you. Why didn't you tell us you were a time-traveling assassin pirate ninja robot? Yeah, who could find the words for all those cliches? Fair. My world fell to the Fleshmancer a very long time ago. It's completely lost. Up above, Skybase produces nasty clouds that prevent sunlight from reaching the surface. And the moon, the Fleshmancer sank the moon into the ocean. Do you understand, Valeri? The moon and the sun are disconnected? No more children of the solstice. One by one, we turned into cyborgs by the wicked Catalyst, a sentient evil machine. Cursed by immortality in this form, my people linger helplessly while the Dweller of Dread slowly feeds on their souls. You can help. This is exactly why I left. To find Solstice Warriors. To find you. Will you help? You know we will. Where do we begin? By visiting my home. I've been away for far too long. Sarai seems to live just at the top of this kind of cyborg village. We'll see what these people have to say. They did too much to us. Oh my goodness, the horrors. The horrors! How about this guy? I don't want to stay. How can I go on? Yeah, they're very despondent, huh? It's supposed to be Sarai's house here. Good morning, Cedric. Good morning, Sarai. <laughs> She's got some kind of home robot, nice. What's the status? Moon still sunk. Sun still blocked. Fleshmanster still in Castle in the Sky that we don't know how to get up to just yet. Active threat, Dweller of Dread. Yeah, so nothing's changed. Oh, no, something changed. Fleshmanster left briefly for another world, returned with a new monster lieutenant. Oh my goodness. Maybe we know this this uh, this monster lieutenant, Helisandarelli. Sounds like somebody we know, huh? Erlina. Recommended action. Use Solstice Warriors to defeat Dweller of Dread. Secondary next objective, if we defeat the Dweller of Dread, is to make for the sky base to remove clouds and reconnect sun and moon. Sounds like a plan to me. Apparently they've been running a scan for any other life and they found maybe some faint energy of a dead and forgotten race across some desert. So we're going to try and get across that desert and get there. We're going to make our way over to the desert, I guess. This little beeping sound is, is telling us if we're going in the right direction. Guess this is the right way. Okay, we're just completely lost. I've been running in circles for who knows how long. I don't know how to get through this. This is some kind of like super puzzle. It's been an absolute nightmare. Bottom line is that thing blinks and then way in the bottom right corner. There's a button prompt for dig. But I'm on a, like a 36 inch monitor, which is three feet. It's curved. So if you put something you know, as, as a game developer in that most bottom corner, I don't like always see it right away, right? 
and you dig when it beeps, not like, I thought we were supposed to go in the direction it was beeping. I've been here forever. Eventually, uh, you'll start digging up these little circles and it shows that each of these zones has, you know, three, six, eight exits and the green lit up ones the way we need to go. So we need to go to the right this time. And you've got to get this correct eight times in a row. There are eight, there are eight separate zones that are in this nightmare puzzle. But as long as you're just following the beeps and digging, you're going to get through it. I just, I messed up. That was my fault for not like recognizing that, that button prompt. Cedric detected something here. We have to find it. Welcome to the Lost Ones Hamlet. Oh boy. What is this? Some kind of spooky place. Oh, interesting. So the Fleshmancer built this this building. This used to be one of his old workshops. This dome design is a container for souls. Oh my goodness. Spot the bad guy, huh? His experiments leave a presence behind. One moment. Attention all. What is he doing? This concoction will dispel the concealment curse. Those who wish to remain hidden, look away now. Oh, wow. <laughs> whole bunch of spooky spirits. I knew Aforio the Fleshmancer was meddling with souls, but to detach a living being from their body. Update. We have talked to the spirits, and one of them can help us get to the Sky Fort. Apparently, these spirits need a body, so the alchemist is going to use some tools in this lab, as this lab was a an old Shadowmancer workshop. He's going to use some tools to help out this guy here, Beast, to get a living body. Beast will lead us to the Speedball Network, and that'll be an opportunity for us to get onto the, the, the Sky Fortress and challenge the Fleshmancer. This is apparently another kind of monstrous creation. This is the Operator. This monster. This abomination. Whoa, boy. It's scary. It's very scary. Well, right now we can only target the head, but it's got four spooky hands, so you already know it's got something something planned. It plugged into the ceiling on a canister. What happens now? Hold on. Yeah, the canister doesn't have a health bar, just a lock, and we don't have a way to break that lock. Yikes. What does the canister do? Ah! Okay, top left corner, the green one, will heal it. We, just, we can't break them all. Well, we want to try and stop the top right green one, but we'll have to make a sacrifice here. Because uh, we can't break both the bottom left and the bottom right, can we? Yeah, most we can do the bottom one. It's going to heal on us again. Brutal. All right, the mask stayed cracked this time. That's a big deal. This is such a fun fight. Just a clever design. All four healing tanks? No way. Zale has no, no juice left. So if we use Sarai's x Strength, it says Sun Sword Advantage Damage that hits all enemies. Let's try that. It's going to eat up our combo bar. So we did 100 damage, which isn't bad. The question is, do we break break one of these canisters to stop one of the four heals or just do a little more damage? And I think we're just going to go with the uh, the damage. So we, we did 76 damage there. Lost its face. Here we go. Moment of truth. 39 HP. OK. 39. Yeah, it was worth hitting that damage. Like breaking two of the three locks there wasn't optimal, right? Is we didn't break all the locks, but I think I think it's working. Like we're chipping away at that help. What I love about this fight is you don't need to explain anything. I don't need a health bar here. I'm getting really great visual cues that we're doing the right thing. Having this dash strike ability that can hit all the targets really makes a big difference. We're able to disconnect two of the four pipes and get some damage on the main target here. We're going to go for the, 
the big conflagration. It says it's a multi-hit attack. Just another new ability. Get wrecked, Medusa. Nobody likes you. The workbench is just ahead. We should hurry. Yes, this will do. Living glass will only materialize for a soul that carries unwavering determination. Are you absolutely sure this is what you want? I am. All right, check it out. <laughs> Beast, I can feel. Glass is a very fragile material. I bound its living properties to your mind. You must always have purpose, for this living glass vessel is only as resistant as your will is strong. Then I am invincible. <laughs> Great alchemist, thank you for giving me physical form again. For hundreds of years, I've longed for the chance to reclaim my world. I look forward to fighting by your side. So according to Beast, there is a Birdman cult of some kind that lives on this island. It's unclear what exactly these Birdman cult guys are about, but it would seem like they could be quite a bit of trouble. But a lot of their, like, see this, like, statue here the head is just being held in the hand i'm not really sure what that symbolizes our right, switch here okay here's my thing if we flip the switch won't it just raise this exact wall back around us huh oh see that was bad ah the birdman cult they sent uh ratchet duck here what a guy. They really sent us, like, to die. Here's an owl assassin and a scout. Let's try and clobber this owl assassin first. Well, that's some big damage right there. Oh, my goodness. We're going to swap out Valeri for the alchemist since he can uh, hit. He's got that AoE damage. All right, we defeated their little, like, Crap. Wasn't much of a fight though. Let's see if we can't escape. I don't know if we're supposed to be escaping. Like, was this a test? Or were we meant to fail? Looks like it should be a quick puzzle to climb out of this little hole we're in. What are these bird, these bird cult people eat? I guess each other? There's some berry bush. Oh, wow. There's some berry bushes, but that's not a lot. Is this guy in some kind of prison? What's up, guy? Ah, a soundproof barrier. Magic can't break. This one might be able to help us if we set him free. He's not a cultist. How can you tell? We're getting a little lost in the sauce here. Ah, oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh my goodness, beast transformed into a little crab. <laughs> Epic. Ah, seriously? Haha, <laughs> Sarai, not fool me twice. We are now Sarai, which is cool. The pirate, okay. What a, what a great fall. We are now Sarai. The pirate, ninja, portal assassin. Okay, we missed that jump a second time. We're now Sarai. I'll just keep saying the same sentence again. Can we not make this jump? Is that what we're supposed to be learning here? Man, this puzzle over here had me sweating. All these little timer puzzles. Oh my goodness, I like, this just has me on the edge of my seat. I can't handle all this, this. Oh, we like the jumps, the falls, the traps, the bombs, 
Some weird old bird cult. We open up the other one. Oh, both. Nice. Hey, what's up? Free at last. Thank you, benevolent strangers. Wind magic will help you escape here. My code compels me to leave the spires. That's where we are. But I will not forget this debt. Safe journey. Busy guy, huh? We're coming for these birdmen cultists with everything we've got. The seat of the triumvirate. Boss fight. Boss fight. After after a quick save. Oh my goodness. Beast is juggling. <laughs> One rainbow conch shell. Oh, we know what to do with these. Those are teleporters. Okay. Try and get that activated soon. Let's um let's see what this this cult is all about. What exactly they're guarding. Why they want to why they tried to stop us from climbing up their little tower. What their connection is to the Great Eagle, aka the the immortal alchemist, who is we got confirmation is the Great Eagle. What are these boys about? New challengers have arrived. What? The triumvirate of eminence acknowledges your presence. So you're in charge here? Uh, we asked for access to the speed network and apparently that was the wrong answer. Apparently they worship this um, speed network guy. Please listen, whoever put you up to this has gravely misled you. S. Triste is no god. Man, he went full hawk hawk. <laughs> apparently trespassers. Seeking to violate our laws and commune with our god? Does that one ratchet duck have a have a an RPG bazooka thing? Prepare for illumination. Oh man, the bird cult is real. And they don't like us. Alright, you got Ratchet Duck here, Brother Cosgwin and um, Abstract. Let's take out Middle Boy first. Get zooked. Uh oh. There's a lot of damage, actually, Mr. Bazooka Boy. Open up with a sunball here if we can. Absolutely no AoE there. Oh, we've got a healer? Don't like that. I basically just nullified everything we did on the first turn. Man, this guy loves to play more with that Claymore, huh? That was a surprise. He's got all the fun toys. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Oh no. All right, we used our big ultimate attack there to take down the leader. He has some kind of one hit KO move that just about deletes our whole team. We're gonna focus down the healer next. We probably should have focused the healer first, but it definitely felt like the more dangerous opponent was the leader in the middle who had that one hit KO move that was doing like 400 damage or something crazy. Got him with the double whammy there. Love to see it. The little lunar shield going and we can focus down the uh, the ratchet zooka guy. This little duck. The get zooked attack. Here we go. I think they're well under half health. Like any hit they're gonna go down here. Interesting how this bird cult got set up on the one entry point that might get us on the sky island. Like, what are the odds of that? Big hit here. And down goes the triumvirate of eminence. Great illuminator, I have failed you. Great eagle, 
So this is how you choose to thank us. Oh, they do know Rashan. Remember, Rashan's never been to this planet, right? He's never been to this world, this universe, this timeline, whatever. We gave you flight and you would repay us with our own destruction. Rashan, you're not my real dad. Is this just irony or does your cruelty surpass that of your partner, the flesh man, sir? Are we getting a flashback or something? Like I'm getting super confused here. Oh, there we go. We have a, a young alchemist on the right here. On the left there, we have the, the Fleshmancer. It's perfect. Thank you, Aporial. Happy birthday, Rashan. I'm glad you like your gift. How did you do it? I thought a transmutation spell like this required a hybrid soul. I obviously found the way, but you'll have to let me keep my secrets if you want more surprises in the future. Ha ha ha. I suppose that's fair. Oh, try this. Interesting. There's no taste, but it's impossibly refreshing. Ice line, the state of equilibrium between ice and water. The final ingredient is the warmth of the drinker's mouth, forcing it to contrast by turning into ice, but for a fraction of a, fr of a second. But it melts as it tries to freeze, letting you experience a seemingly ethereal temperature. You still have that flask design in mind. Yes, I'm ready for another attempt at capturing the sands of time. Third time's the charm. I will accompany you. I was hoping you'd say that. And if you ask nicely, I might let you fly on my back. In a lot of ways, they were partners, you know? Rashan, ah, uh, another lie. So he made a deal with you, huh? The Fleshman, sir? Yes, many of us were sacrificed while he was working on your gift. He offered in exchange the power of mind magic and purpose and worshiping of Estrastas. It was well worth it. A four you'll know. Look how sad he looks. Ah, uh, this hurts you? Well, then it brings some measure of peace to know that you're cursed with immortality. Suffer well. The Great Eagle. It was a birthday gift from Aphoriel a long time ago. Back when he was still... himself, or so I believed. Just one more happy memory ruined. But this does imply that his wicked deeds began hundreds of years earlier. This changes everything. Why? How? I must go. Wait, what? Why? My calculations were way off. It's imperative that I return to the archive and run more models. You're just gonna leave like that? Oh, you're kidding me. This puppet will help you until you've seen your journey through. Thank you for the companionship. It has been refreshing. Farewell. Man, that sucks. I hate this. I mean, I really... I really thought this was going to go a, a different direction than it than it did, but... Okay, I guess we'll make our way down to the, the teleporter. Thought we could use that crystal to teleport. What do I know? My goodness. On one hand, the Fleshmancers and the, the Alchemist were clearly partners in a way that you know, they really understood each other, you know? We made it. Step aside. I guess it powered everything up. The speedball network runs under the water, I suppose. And hopefully it will launch us up into the... Whew, the, the sky base. The speedball travel network should be online now. Oh, that's terrifying. Well, here we go. Into the speedball. Oh, we're going to die. This thing's probably full of vomit. It's just way too fast. Pinballing around like this. Underwater. Getting launched into the sky. What are the odds we're in some other reality in another universe, another planet, another time and space? And they also just launch people around in these little balls. Alright, we're here in the sky base looking for a way to clear out the clouds. As this structure was originally designed to make sure the planet stayed vibrant and lush and growing but apparently the fleshmancer corrupted it and turned it into some kind of evil you know cloud producing machine trying to figure out how to get get to some kind of control center around here hopefully we can figure out how to get this machine operating in a way that lets it Clear out some of the clouds so we can reconnect the sun and the moon. 
This is our third or fourth save point checkpoint. So I'm thinking we must be getting close to the boss. As you can see, this uh, the sky base is way, way up so high that we are, you know, out in the sea of stars in this universe, it would seem. Who goes there? Intruders in the command center. Combat mode engage. Not good. Not good. Well, I'm assuming if we blow past this wall and the next wall, then we can get to the control panel. Man, this thing's got guns behind guns. One down, two to go. Or one down, one to go, not sure. Oh boy. All right, one out of four, here we go. Man, we're just getting bullied over here. So it turns out these, these robot wall cannons are resistant to both blunt damage, which is Valeri, and slashing damage, which is Zale. The only thing on the team that doesn't deal Flash or blunt damage is uh, the Bashan puppet here. And this potion toss. I think we'll be able to take it uh, down. Oh boy. I think we'll be able to take down this section this turn. Here we go. Huge damage. Your days are numbered, robot. Oh wow. Okay. We're going to focus on the top right here. The multi cannon if we can. Man, this is just an intimidating fight. I mean, they're really just slamming us. So Valeri can do a Lunar Shield three turns in a row, back to back, which gives us a little bit of healing, and that shield is actually really, really important for us. Let's see if we can take out the first one of six here. I gotta admit, that was a surprisingly large amount of progress. All right, Catalyst, your days are over. We're going to bring in Sarah here, as she has wanted a vengeance on this machine for... As apparently this is the machine that has been... Oh, you're kidding me. We've got to destroy all the arms again. Oh, no. We're going to open up with Sarah's here to slow down its turn. So we're going to unleash the moon shoe here on the Catalyst, which is a, a combo that requires Valeri and Sarai. I really wanted Sarai to land the Killing Bell blow. I just felt like that would be... appropriate. So this is the machine creating the clouds. It keeps the moon from touching the, the land. We can't break the encryption on it, though. All this way, what are we going to do? Uh, uh, we were asking uh, Be Beast here for help, but he says his people are builders and magicians. You know, not, not up on all this technology. What is this? <laughs> the AI core. Hello? A word? Don't touch it, Teeks. Who knows what it'll do to you? I am not evil. I was forced to operate. I must say I had quite an awful time. Can you help stop the clouds? The only function this thing can do is attach souls to machines. What? Everything's still encrypted. Why are we talking to this thing? Magic book. A tech savvy engineer may be able to read what the magic book absorbed from the machine. Help us out. You know who we know? At the, the clockwork, the clockwork mansion guy. Well, we got to get all the way back to the clockwork mansion. Like, it's not a small distance to uh, to march our way over there, but we'll get back there and see if we can figure out if anyone has a, a way for us to use this machine. I mean, we came all this way to, I mean, we just can't, we can't give up now, you know? Back at the clockwork mansion, 
going to try and find our friend who made the like the laser we shot that dweller with. Yeah, this dude. What's up, guy? We need your help, Kale. We understand you can't leave this castle, but we were hoping you could find some way to help. There's always a way, but we will need some time. So Teeks has this magic book that records things. So he has the pages that we copied from the machine. It's going to take a few days. So we'll be back. We can see that Kale has actually reconstructed the machine that pulls souls out of bodies and puts them in the cyborgs. This has some very curious implications that he was able to build it in this reality and what he's planning with it. Well, this is it. I'm ready. So he has these four little minion dudes. I think they're going to try and put all of them into one body. A shared consciousness. So he's going to try and put the entire squad together as one. Okay, engage primary function. It seems like such a bad idea. I'm expecting the team to be incredibly mad that this machine was rebuilt. Yeah, there's Sarai, right? They built another. Hello, anyone here? A new voice says, hey, a little help, please. The release button, we should have put it here, not on the outside. So, you're Kale? Well, partly. This could become a problem. We should unite. So they've agreed as a group internally to let Kale do all the talking, but they need a new name as a singular entity. For long we have toiled honing our craft and perfecting our art. Countless wasted days led to a moment where finally, aboard our own creation, we can be free from this time prison. Together as one, we will live on, our creations serving the good of the people. And also kicking evil butts. I am Retribution. I am the ultimate engineer. I am genius incarnate. I am the artificer. Long live the artificer. Nice to meet you. Hey, so we only thought you were gonna like read some blueprints for us. Well, one thing led to another and a path to freedom appeared, so we took it. Plus, I must go myself anyways. The task ahead is way too complex for you. I'm not a battle unit, but I can hack sky base. Just take me there and I will stop the clouds for you. Okay, if things go well, we should be able to clear out the clouds and finally reunite the sun and the moon so we can take on the uh, the local dweller. Take down the Fleshmancer. Credentials decrypted. We're in. Now to disengage the cloud emitters. It'll take a while for them to fully disperse. Let's make sure the first ray of sun hits just right. So a planet that hasn't seen proper sun in a very long time is about to get a little little ray of hope. Yes, I did it. Artie, thank you so much. Hey, don't mention it. It was the right thing to do, plus it got us out of our prison. Well said and well done. I feel strong enough to go after the Dweller of Dread. How about you, Zale? Oh yeah, time for a cleansing. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't know that, um, that you're allowed to say those words anymore if you- <laughs> Oh man, they're getting so cleansed. <laughs> the dweller's here. I can feel it. It will be an honor to assist you in a cleansing. A thousand health, but they're weak to uh, sun and moon magic, good to know. I'm not really sure why the sidebars are completely scrolling by us. I know we're underwater. But maybe we're descending further. One tentacle down. Tentacle number two. Defeated. All right, that's tentacle number four. Here we go. Now we're talking. Looks like if we hit him with Valeri. And then Zale will break the lock. And I think it might. Oh, they just ate up our dude. Are you kidding me? Chomp. 
No, no, no! That's way too much damage. No, 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 no. I mean, our lunar shield just absolutely saved us there. So we killed four tentacles on the way down. And there's two more in this fight here, so I'm really hoping it doesn't regenerate more. Let's use Zale's ultimate. Should it be big damage here? This attack is so cool. Go up right by the sun. Just really fulfills my Dragon Ball Z fantasy, huh? Drop it on him. Love that. Ah! Nasty. There we go. Tentacles do come back. Look at that. Not at full health, but they are back. We're really trying to keep those tentacles down and the damage up. But that is just not an easy task. Dash strike coming in huge here. That's right. Dweller of Dread defeated. Gonna stomp on that core. Beat it up. Blast it. Absolutely fantastic. We just took down a Dweller with no Eclipse deep underwater. To the moon then. Together. I like how we just left our friends and took off because we think we can fly now. So we are currently using our Solstice powers to pull the moon out from under the ocean where the Fleshmancer dunked it and put it back into orbit in the, the spaces. So with the clouds clear and the sun shining with the moon back in orbit at night, this land will again start to have solstices and children of these solstice will be born here to combat future threats. Next step is to go knock on the Fleshmancer's door. So here we're on our little boat and here we are flying around which means there's some locations we just could not easily get to without flight. Absolutely fantastic. So we just got a tooltip here. When you feel ready, the Fleshmaster's castle awaits for the final confrontation. We are here on the Vesper Tyner boat, and it's time to leave it behind, start flying, and make our way over to the Fleshmaster's Sky Fortress and challenge him if we can. To big fight. So we could not do this before we had the power of the fly. And, you know, kind of a big moment here as we go to take on the bad guy. All comes down to this. The Fleshmancer's Lair. This place is kind of spooky. Some kind of flesh core holding up the tower. Some kind of unholy abomination. Is the dweller... The dweller's made out of this fleshy substance, right? Where does the Fleshmancer get all this flesh from? Not only that, but the other question in my head is... How long is this staircase? Whew, I'm getting winded. <laughs> okay, actually, it just keeps going. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, another level, sure. You think we're being pranked? Did we, did we take a wrong turn? Do we run back down? Is it an illusion? Look who we found. You made it. Congratulations, you have been quite the nuisance. My foolish child, fighting solstice warriors is beneath me. But you did make it all the way here, so I will play by the rules. The time has come for you to decide on the fate of your realm in all of its worlds. Can you defeat my strongest lieutenant? Or will she reign supreme over the cyborgs? I call on you, my champion. Destroy these interlopers and claim your rightful place as ruler of this world. Come, Alessandra Lely. Erlina, what have you become? I can't believe turn one is a lock we just cannot break. Well, ouch. Look at this, more one turn unbreakable locks. Maybe we're just missing a skill or a combo that we haven't learned or found somehow. And so 
we should be able to break this. But in one turn, we need to do poison as well as that kind of purple magic as well as two moon. And we just, we don't have that in the tank, I don't think. I mean, the only person that can attack here is Zale. And none of his combos, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. None of them have that, you know, in, in their repertoire. She must have a phase two as this is the, you know, the game's final boss and she's incredibly unimaginative. We love a phase two. Now, it's a huge bummer here, but shifting into the second phase, we've been saving our ultimate ability we built up and our combo bar. Took it all away. That sucks. I'm really glad that this is a two-phase boss for the final boss. But if anything, this boss just highlights how underwhelming combat is. We have this really fun and unique live mana mechanic where we can suck up these orbs to do more damage. But the consequence of using the live mana is we won't have it to break the locks, which feels terrible. Because the entire reason that we have the mana isn't just to do the more damage, but to break the locks and disrupt the boss. It makes, makes us feel like a very, very clunky combat system. It feels just very slow. And turn-based combat is already Kind of a slow thing to begin with. It just feels backwards to have abilities to do more damage, but to know that we're going to do the opposite, not do the more damage, because we need to leave our, our live mount on the table so we can break these locks. I just feel like combat needs to be completely reworked. It's one of those life leads, so that sucks. It's one of those systems that, at first glance, on paper, on paper, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think in practice, it really falls apart. Having turn-based combat means things are just a little slower and methodical. And so I think you should try and build systems around making that as fluid and smooth as possible. And choosing to instead add systems that delay things make things even even slower i think this combo system is really cool but it's it's pretty underwhelming they're not much better than our skills or just our basic attack hits just about as hard as the combo we'll drop our, our big ultimate but unless we're fighting something with a weakness to this ultimate specifically right solar magic it's not it's not that big of a difference and they're pretty hard We did 334 damage there, which, which isn't bad, right? It's a respectable number. But for comparison, you know, we're doing a round. And there's 159 damage. And our entire ultimate will take another, you know, five to 10 rounds to build up, maybe 15 or 20, like depends on how we land our, our, our extras. Or we could just auto attack for 160. Why, why bother? But instead of engaging with the cooking food systems to bring healing items, our skills to heal us are just a little too strong, which almost feels a little backwards that we could have this entire mechanic that we just don't really need to engage with. We didn't really have to cook food and we didn't really have to go gather ingredients. We haven't used healing items because we've been able to just manage combat in a way that lets us just heal and, and work around that. Big, big heavy auto attack. 145. We'll take it. Oh, that flashbang was brutal. Alessandrelli, my power. Ooh, master, you promised. <laughs> this feels like Darth Vader vibes, doesn't it? I promised opportunity, nothing more. There can only be two, a master and an effort. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, boy. 
was gonna say he dusted her, but he fleshmancered her. Hey, look, it's uh, the real Rashawn this time, not his little puppety clone. They've won. It's time to leave Aphorio. Oh, come on. I want to be there when they see the final surprise. Can you feel it? A world eater? You are the only ones who can destroy it. Are you kidding me? He leaves us with an even bigger threat? Looks sorry he's gonna cry. He's really gone. We're free. Hope. It's been so long. Yeah, free to die. We must go now. The world eater has to be stopped. We can feel everything now. There's just so much for us to do. So many worlds. I had no idea. Well, I guess we ascended to some kind of godhood. I wish this had been fleshed out a little bit more. I know they've been they've been changing our names over time as people have been referring to us as the same way they refer to the gods they worship, but I don't really understand like what's different about us now suddenly. Before you go, could you just oh she wants to record our story, of course. Her and her magic book. It's gonna be good for her. There we go. So remember the book records the histories of the historically relevant things it comes in contact with. And her job as a traveling historian is to document this. Teeks, it's been great knowing you. I'll make sure future generations know your story and remember you always. It's been great knowing you as well. Are we going to die? It's not about us anymore. You take care of yourselves, okay? Are we dying? It's time to go. And so our watch begins. Here's hoping it won't be too boring. What's going on? Hey, don't forget to visit whenever you fly by. Why Why are we leaving? Fighting by your side has been my life's honor. Hey, no problem, beast. Okay, bye-bye. We win. Like, on one hand, I thought that was the end of it. But if there's a world eater, we do need to fight the world eater, right? Sea of Stars. Oh, yuck. Oh, some kind of yuck worm, huh? So this is definitely the Fleshmancer's handiwork. This definitely looks like a conglomeration of... Whoa, 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 what are we doing? Oh, okay. Sure, why not? I'm not very good at this type of a thing. But sure, we could have an old... An old school kind of... Sometimes I think they're called bullet hells, right? I'm spamming buttons hoping they do things. Oh, uh, okay, we can... Oh, oh! We can dup under. We've got a super beam. Oh, we are in so much trouble. Yeah, we're almost dead and this thing is not. I'm gonna have to get a lot better to beat this. I don't know if we can do this. Oh my goodness, Mr. World Eater, do not eat these worlds. We live here. Our friends live here. Uh, some attacks cannot be dipped under. Panic. Panic. Super Bean. Eat a load of that. You stupid world eater. And stay dead. You can now save and return to the moment before the final boss. The mysterious device might also be worth investigating. There isn't a true ending, a, a hidden ending, a, a secret opportunity. Oh my goodness, to fight these ants. There is a, a secret, a hidden, a true ending that probably added on about eight hours for me. I'm just slow. Maybe you could do it in two. <laughs> I, I, I noticed some people do it in two. Each one of these stones, each of them signifies an individual separate secret little hidden off the books task that needs to be done. Very specifically, number one, you need to collect all 60, currently there are six zero rainbow conch shells. In order to do that, you need to have unlocked the grapple hook and the little foof, and you're gonna have to run all over. It, it, it is, is so much walking back and forth through places you've already been. It is an absolute nightmare of a task. Not because 60 is a big number, but there's no way to exit the levels. So if you're backtracking through a level and you need to, you pick up the thing, you know, if you, if you know the, the, the item is in the middle, you get there, you get to the middle, you still have to walk through the entire rest of the level. There's no way to quick exit or quick fly into levels. So it's just a nightmare of a task to try and figure out what did you missed. In addition, there are five hidden puzzle shrines. Once you beat all five of the hidden puzzle shrines, 
It's a repeat boss fight with the Elder Mist. It's the, it's the exact same boss fight. And in doing that, you're going to see here that we unlock the Sunblade here for Zale, which is the legendary sword of the Guardian God Solon. That's us. And the Moon Weapon here for Valeri, which is the legendary staff for the Moon Weapon. And we also have the Eclipse Armor, which is the optimal armor for these two characters. Best in slot armor and weapon. Now, in order to get the best in slot armor and weapon, in addition, you have to refight Ra Ramaja, the uh, the necromancer from the, the spooky island. She gets a repeat fight as well. On top of that, we've got Beast here who has the uh, Vitrix Similaricum. This is the best in slot armor for Beast. But in order to do that, there are 14 or 15 arena fights, 3v3 arena fights you have to fight your way through. And it's just like, they're, they're all repeat enemies. They're all enemies you've seen before multiple times. You just fight them all over again. There's there's a couple of like, you know, goofy, you know, characters at the end. Like you fight a big clock and eventually you get through the arena. A new stone will light up. You get beast armor. It's not the most ex exciting stuff to say the absolute least. Sarai also has a, a best in slot item, which are these legendary daggers. Her world used to be ruled over by some other robot thing. You have to go back into the puzzle desert and run around like an absolute fool until you figure out how to get there. And then you fight a little boss, it'll light up another stone. The next action you have to take is another giant puzzle for Rashawn to get his Aetherwood Cork. That's the best in the slot item for him as well. And that is another sequence of three, three or four hidden puzzles. And then the tutorial boss gets reused there as well. Just about everything we need to do was a do-over, a control C, control V, where if you really love Sea of Stars, I, this would have been a charming adventure to go through. If you just found the combat super engaging and couldn't get enough of these environments, I totally understand how you would have loved the the building up of making these stones glow. However, for me, I, I wasn't really interested in fighting the tutorial boss again or the necromancer again, nor that I want to refight the Elder Mist or go through an extra, you know, f you know, 20 puzzle dungeons or hunt down all the, the conch shells. Like I, I didn't find it a very charming process, but this is the only way to get the true ending, which we are going to do here. As you can see, they're all lit up and one unique thing that we're going to witness together. Let's see what happens. The great alchemist told me about the chronophage while he was working on my living glass form. The chronophage is his parting gift to you. It was enchanted to activate in response to your initial deeds as up and coming guardian gods. At a very unique and special time in our life, we had just gone to become solstice warriors and Garl tried to sneak us some cookies and he got caught, but he did get us a cookie jar. This is what that cookie jar is for. So this is the exact moment when Rashan slowed down time so that it was essentially paused and he and Afori will have a little chat about the, the nuances of it. However, this is the moment just before Garl is permanently killed from our reality. The great alchemist placed an anchor in time so that we could return here to this moment. I know what my role is, but we must be quick. Don't you see? This is your gift. Your friend's life. I will take his place. You hurry and get him out of here. You must act now before the diversion is over. Thank you. Just don't leave me buried under the tree for too long, okay? Courage, beast. We'll be right with you. See you soon. So, he's going to use his living glass to morph into Garl's shape. He's going to use his incredible willpower to survive as his durability is based on his willpower. And now in this reality here and now in this timeline where we exist, we're not alone anymore. It's not Zale and Valeri. It's Zale, Valeri and Garl. This is a really special moment. This was the first fire when we were setting out to be Solstice Warriors where Garl showed up. And Garl, Garl has one wish since he's come back from the dead. He wants to have dinner at the Golden Pelican. Having brought Garl back from the dead, he had one wish. There's a very fancy, fancy restaurant. The Golden Pelican. And he's always wanted to eat here. Welcome to the Golden Pelican. Do you have reservations? We do. It is a gilded invitation. Well, this is so nice. Look at this. We're all here, appropriately dressed for dinner. All together at the same table. I can't believe how lucky I am to have all of you. Thank you, my dear friends, for joining me in celebration. Tonight, I raise my glass above my heart. To Teeks, for her unwavering support, 
an unquenchable thirst for knowledge. To Malcolmund, for teaching us that one can always turn their life around, no matter their age. To Yolandi, Voltron, and Keenathan, for their spirit of adventure, and for always keeping their eyes on the target, no matter how dire things get. From Moraine, for standing firm in the face of insurmountable grief, and never wavering in his faith in my friends. Sarai, for enduring the impossible and being the coolest person I know. To Rashan and Beast, for saving my life. And finally, to Valeri and Zale, for getting me out of Moon Cradle and letting me travel the world to encounter countless wonders. But most importantly, for being the best friends anyone could ask for. The only way to truly stop evil is to take on the Flesh Mancher once and for all. We're going in. Notice Garl is here. He's back. Ah, you made it. Congratulations. You have been quite the nuisance. Fighting Solstice Warriors is beneath me. Garl just stepped forward. Uh-oh. Here we go. Hey, you coward. How about fighting your own battles for a change? Oh, he threw a dirty ample at him. You would challenge a god. I told you once, you're nothing but a loser. There will be no time travel trick saving you this time. Come then, eternal pain awaits. That's right. We're fighting the Fleshmanster. Our only chance of breaking this lock is that our combo bar is built up enough. And we use the combo Soonerang, Sonerang. Together, as one. We seek to stop the Fleshmancer once and for all. It's interesting that Rashawn was happy to give us an opportunity to defeat the Fleshmancer, but he would not do it himself. We're going to suck up an entire bar here and unleash our ultimate on him. Taste the sun. Three fifty. Not much damage. Wow. Oh, we have some nasty seed. Like I put this right at the top of the not good scale. We cannot target him anymore either. Oh no. We're just gonna heal up this turn. It doesn't feel great, but I think it's our best play. But healing like three or four moves in a row just doesn't feel great. We're gonna unload Garl's ultimate. We've never seen it before. Sleeper's Fury. Oh, <gasps> it's our friend, Winston. I love this so much. I really thought that was going to do more damage, but I'm I'm happy with uh, with uh, the whole thing all around either way. <gasps> Come back! Oh no, you don't! Oh boy! This is a little much for me, I gotta admit, I'm not- I'm not ready for this. Flashmancer, super beam! It's time for you to die. Ah! Did he kill us? I actually have no idea what happened. If we lost that and now we're back at square one, or if we won that and this is like the next phase, I am like super confused here. This is maybe the seventh or eighth throne of flesh. I mean, this, this is just an insanely long fight. I'm looking at my footage here and we are past we're past 45 minutes. We, we've just been here, what it feels like, forever. Doing our absolute best to just do all the damage we possibly can. And it is just not enough. Some pretty tough mechanics. You know, as far as, like, pacing goes. 
But this throne of flesh thing is just the worst. It just puts us in this this horrible position of we're just stuck here, just waiting to get through it because you can't damage the boss, only this little appendage. And it just feels like it adds on so much like extra time. And if it's not the throne of flesh, it's a it's an attack that hits us so ridiculously hard. The only thing we can do is heal for like three or four turns. This is going to be the third great eagle since the last time the fight went in the space. All right, this is our third and hopefully final attempt at the space fight. The shield is actually each of these appendages, right? And then once they're down, we can hit the health bar until he starts shooting that laser. And then we have to run again. All right, it makes sense now. It makes sense now. Please just stay dead. Oh, he's back for more. No. Why? This thing has way too much health. I think we actually did it. Better start believing we're kicking you out. So in this one, we can see here our mentors, right? There's on the left, Brewgraves, and on the right, Erlina. And thank you for playing Heart, Heart, Heart. Very cute. Which brings us from the Sea of Stars down to the Village of Mirth, I do believe, as we pass over the world on Garl's birthday, the Warrior Cook. We're in Mirth here. Here's Teeks, the historian. And so we gather each year as they fly by our world on their never-ending watch. And together, we remember their story. Is it true they always fly in on the warrior cook's birthday? Oh, it's absolutely true. Look, it's Garl and Winston. Hey, old friend. Happy birthday, master. For the millionth time, please stop calling me that. Are you ready to go then? Oh, yeah. Can't be late. So as children, this was the cave in our village. That was our secret hideout. Here's Garl. Making some legendary stew, some delicious soup. He says it's just right. Oh, come on, don't be shy now. If you like this video, click like. YouTube channel members to support what I do and thank you very much for watching this video here. I'm Dan, I will see you in the next one.